Hello everyone, my name is Barbara and I would like to welcome you all to our latest Novage webinar episode. In this week's episode, enjoy a game-changing visualization with Twinmotion. Twinmotion is a real-time visualization and immersion software that is changing the way designers and engineers interact with, the mo with their models. Learning Twinmotion is extremely easy and we will see that. It's extraordinary responsive Responsiveness allows project integration into lifelike environments while you're navigating and discovering your scene the same as in a video game. It offers new ways to design and communicate any project. And now let me tell you a little bit about today's presenter. Trained as an architect, Ildiko Zabo has been a member of the Advent team since 2001. Over the year, she has followed the evolution of Atlantis closely and has acquired vast experience in architectural visualization in general. She attended numerous expositions, fairs, and user events to popularize Atlantis and has also taught Atlantis courses in different languages and countries around the world. Before we get going, here's an overview of what we do at Novage. Novage is uh, one of the largest online stores for design software, and we offer huge assortments of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. So put us to the test and come visit us at novage.com. For more daily software news and limited time promotions, also um, pay a visit to the Novage blog and follow us on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Coming up next week, the future of design with Fusion 360. Last but not least, today's webinar is free and is being recorded live, so if you want to rewatch this or any webinar episode in our collection, just head on over to Novage's YouTube or Vimeo channels. Thank you, Barbara, and welcome everybody to this uh, presentation of today of Twinmotion. Twinmotion is a product developed by Cara a French company, and is specially designed for architects. So my screen is shared already. What you see here is a, a twin motion scene already. It's very still, so allow me to release the camera. And all of a sudden, the whole scene turns very lifelike. People are starting to have gestures while they are standing, talking to each other. And even the trees are bending because the effect of a small breeze, leaves are moving, uh, branches are bending. So the whole scene uh, looks very... For some reason I can't hear you. ...realistic. Oh yeah, then we should check out. The voicing is on. Okay, maybe you can hear me now. Is it okay? Yes. Fine. Good. So I continue. My uh, screen, as I already told you, is uh, moving because uh, the whole uh, scene looks very lifelike. People are moving, having gestures, trees are moving as well. And I even can turn around the camera. I'm look ar looking around, I can even move, let me advance, discover this scene, I'm part of this model, part of this scene, I'm just uh, discovering it, at the same time I'm preparing the presentation. So what is Twinmotion in fact? Twinmotion is a standalone visualization application especially designed for architects, interior designers, landscape architects, or in fact to any professional who would like to set up a nice presentation out of a 3D model. So let me close this full screen mode in order to reveal the interface of Twinmotion. And now we can discover the rest of the palettes. The most important one is the viewport, of course where we have this uh, online feedback of all that will happen in the final rendering. At the left-hand side is the library that stores different library parts of any kind. We will see their use along the presentation. And at the bottom side is the dock. 
the duck group's settings around the topics that follow the logical life cycle of a presentation creation. So we start with importing, then setting up environment, landscaping, setting up forest, populating the scenes, uh, camera settings, and finally the output. So let us start with the import. Being a standalone rendering application, Twinmotion needs a 3D companion, a CAD software that builds the 3D model for it. And uh, for the smoothness of the communication, Twinmotion reads the most uh, common 3D file formats, such as uh, FBX, DWG, DEA, SketchUp. Files can be opened directly in Twinmotion or Cinema 4D files. And uh, these files, and this uh, scene, in fact, what are you seeing here, is a composition of three different models. They were merged together into this scene. However, Twinmotion uh, keeps, administrates these parts of the scene separately. So as you see, each model was imported in FBX format. And uh, that um, way of uh, managing these uh, mo model parts make my life very comfortable whenever a change occurs for one of these models. I make a right click, simply reload the model, and this is how I can update my work. So now let's continue and navigate a little bit in Twinmotion. That happens exactly the way we navigate in a video game. So I have different speeds, for example. I can go as a pedestrian or I can fasten my, uh, uh, speed up my uh, way of uh, navigation to a car or even a flight tree can be generated, then an airplay mode is activated. I can emerge into the buildings, I can enter them, I can uh, become a real part and discover the whole project while I'm doing the settings. And whenever I say that maybe this floor should be changed, I search my library, go for a nice uh, wooden floor, parquet, drag and drop over the surface, and this is the way I'm working, I'm interacting with my model, the changes appear instantly in the viewport, and the doc senses the function I'm working with and allows me to change additional parameters such as the specular, the reflectiveness of the surface, the texture scales, and so forth. So let me continue my navigation and go outside and the backside of this scene. This is uh, the backyard, a very flat terrain. I would like to change into a park. So let me uh, do landscaping, then I open the appropriate uh, tab in the dock and work with the terrain. There are some presets of the terrain uh, for terrain in the library that can be a very flat one, like the one is applied already for this scene, but I can have hills, uh, rocks, uh, I, that can be a very desertic uh, terrain, or high hills uh, can be added to the general uh, as a general terrain for uh, scenes. And I can also add some personalized, customized meshes. Point cloud solutions are also possible, or Google Earth meshes via SketchUp. If I'm satisfied with the flat terrain, and this time I will uh, remain satisfied with this flat terrain, however, I would like to customize it here and there, so I will sculpt it. And to sculpt it is very easy because I have a very adapted uh, tool set that means a brush and tools, for example, to erect some small hills here and there. Okay, then I can take uh, the next tool, which is to dig, then to smooth, change the different settings for the smoothing. Uh, then uh, I can erode the terrain, I can uh, continue to delay it, to flatten it. So I have the complete tool set to generate a nice customized uh, surface. And then, of course, I would like to get rid of uh, this uh, 
quite uh, even green area, it means that uh, I will paint it again with the uh, costume colors and my tool set already offers me four different materials and from the library I can change this tool set, the library has some presets, I can customize these uh, color options the brush is still there, I will lower its size and I will even change its shape to avoid having very regular patches of rock for example, so let me draw some rocky patches here that I will mix with a bit of ground turn it more realistic so just in this small area I'm just uh, painting adding uh, different texture to show you the possibilities we can have in the twin motion and now I'm getting closer to, to check out the way it looks from a closer view and it's time to add some vegetation to the scene so opening the vegetation in the library searching for a nice plant, a tree dragging and dropping to the, into the viewport here it is and we already have a tree that reacts to the weather conditions to a wind because it is set to, to do so this is the, function, uh, the uh, parameter about because the dock already highlights the parameters for this tree. So if I want to keep this tree very still, I can do it. Or if I want to make it move, then it, uh, this um, option is turned on. Later on I will show you where I can set the wind speed, so the tree um, moves according a wind that is set by it into in motion and by uh, the one the person setting the presentation so the rest of the parameters are about the size of the tree and the season so this tree can turn uh, radish the leaves or completely white when it's winter time i prefer this fall tree let me take a look all around. This is our first tree in a park that will certainly uh, include much more trees so I would prefer to make it faster to make a area where I will distribute these trees so for this reason I uh, will open the forest uh, tab on the dock and search my catalog for some trees which uh, I will add to this park so I'm uh, searching, here it is one and the next one and while I'm searching please uh, take a look at the content of this library which is extremely wide it contains plants from all over the globe so landscape architects would be very satisfied to make their presentation with twin motion. So once again I'm ready to paint. I have a brush. I can set the size of this brush and I'm ready to paint. All over the place I would like to have trees and plants. Here we are. Just get a bit further. The plants where the density is maybe too high. I can work out the density for these trees make it even more dense but this will be an urban park so let's go for a reasonable density this time good and uh, maybe I painted over an area I shouldn't then uh, I will lower the size diameter of my brush to erase here it is there is a small park uh, prepared for children where they play so I'm erasing, we shouldn't have plants over there and then I'm ready to complete this selection and this um, park with some additional plants which will be distributed with the selected uh, density okay, bushes, grass, 3D grass let me work out the density only for the grass to increase it 
or some flowers should be added to this grass and if I'm ready I'm ready to visit my park check out the way it looks find the okay let, let us stop here for a second take a look at these plants which are already behaving moving in a very lifelike manner and we did it in a very short time I'm continuing now because uh, I can complete my scene not only with plants but uh, also with people and uh, speaking about uh, an urban scene it's uh, very appropriate to have uh, people walking in the square So let me find a good uh, position for some, uh, from where I can make uh, this uh, setting. Okay, and let's suppose that some guys are entering uh, through that walkway and will continue toward the park. So that means I will draw a path for them. And as the prout grows, they already appear and following the path, they are moving, going, heading toward the assigned uh, objective. These guys so the, can be dressed in different way, casual, business, vacation, sport, Middle East, that make them sport. The number of lanes for the path can be worked out, four lanes are five are possible. The path width can be changed, the lateral offset and the density. So I can generate a huge crowd leaving the stadium or contrary. I will lower very much the density and only one or two person will uh, cross this square randomly that will be uh, completely a different uh, scene I can do the same uh, for people running bicycles or uh, cars are also possible uh, let me uh, generate a path for some vehicles entering this uh, square coming through this gate they also appear in a moment the path evolves that's fine and uh, maybe they are moving in a, some strange way that means I need to edit the path I can do that it's not entering this bus they shouldn't so I can manage I can add control points I can delete control points each can be uh, verified, changed, moved in order to have a very nice smooth path. And when I'm ready now, let me get a bit closer and check out the way this scene looks at the different period of the uh, day, different hour of the day. And for this reason I have the timeline always at my fingertips, right below the dock. At any moment, I can change uh, these uh, light conditions, depending on the hour of the day, to verify my scene, to control it deeply. So now it's a night scene. How does it look? Even the moon may appear and some lights are turned on. And uh, these lights will disappear, will be turned off. In a moment, the sun is up and it's a complete daytime. And as the sun goes down, it turns darker. These objects, including light sources such as the cars having their headlights or the street lamps, uh, will be turned on automatically. This is an inbuilt uh, behavior of these objects to make the light uh, turned on. So let's come back to a uh, day scene and uh, speak a little bit about environment. When uh, we are setting up the environment, uh, we are setting up the way the sky looks. 
for example, which can be blue, which can be tropical, which can be heavenly or mournful. Let me choose this blue sky, which I will furnish with some clouds. That can be cumulus, uh, straight cumulus, so four different cloud types are possible. And each of them, in a moment they are activated, start to move at a certain direction, toward a certain direction with a speed of a wind that affects their movement. It means that the wind again uh, contributes to the realism of a scene. So maybe it's the time to reveal where can we set this wind uh, speed. And now I will uh, open up this tab to show you the last part of the interface of Twin Motion, which is the advanced part. And right here at the lower side, we will have parameters. Many often the same parameters will appear that are manageable through these sliders in the dock directly. And here we can manage them precisely, more precisely with the values, numbers, and so forth. And even additional parameters may appear. So while we are setting up the weather conditions, the wind will appear in the advanced part right below the power and the direction of the wind can be set here. Let me continue. The sun, for the sun we have the most common parameters such as the brightness, shadow, and uh, the power of the sun. And if we would like to make a sun study, then localizing our project is in, uh, imperative. We can do it either using this map, making a search for a certain name, or entering exact GPS coordinates in the advanced part. And then, of course, setting the north, setting the exact period of the year, all is uh, compulsory. The ocean is a very nice uh, function. However, maybe it's not the best scene to show it. Allow me to flood the square by activating the ocean tab. And all of a sudden, I'm raising the level of the ocean. Here it comes. That's it. So 3D waves appear. Oh, it's too much. Good. Oh. I'm not very skilled here. That's fine. Reflection appear on this water surface. Nice um, reflections of the surroundings and the uh, waves appear as well. So the whole surface can be set a very calm water surface or a bit wavy, more wavy, stormy waves, and all these waves are 3D waves, really. You can notice on the side of the geometry that they are um, moving in a real 3D. So now I'm unflooding the square, getting back to normal. We saw the ocean tab as well. And it's time now to speak a little bit about the upper side of the advanced tab, which is a huge list. And this list uh, contains all 3D elements uh, of a scene, regardless whether they were imported and they are part of the 3D model, imported 3D model, or uh, they were added from the library of uh, Twinmotion. These 3D elements are organized in containers. And they, are, they are hierarchically hierarchically structured and uh, these containers uh, will uh, allow us to save phasings altogether. But before showing you the phasing, I will create a new container because I can contribute to, to this hierarchy. I can continue to organize uh, this list. So I'm creating a container which will assign as an active parent container, collecting all further 3D elements I will add to my scene, to the scene. So let me search for a camera view, 
where I have an empty hole, here it is, that should be furnished very quickly. And I open my library with items, with furniture, I'm searching an appropriate object to use. There are quite many things I can use. However, I will uh, prefer to use my own objects because uh, Twinmotion allows me to save my own object and customize my library this way. So I'm choosing these uh, two groups of chairs with table and uh, activating the multi-drop tool, I'm randomly clicking into the viewport directly and Twinmotion will choose one of these uh, elements and add it to the scene. I will add some characters and not one person one by one. I would prefer to go for groups. Then I select some uh, people from the group and with the multi-drop on, I add them to the scene. And in a moment they are added to the scene, they start to move, to behave and uh, look very realistic. Besides these uh, group of people, of course there are some individuals dressed in different manner. Middle East, sport, vacation, casual, business. And let me introduce you Alice, this young lady. Here she is. So, uh, just to check out what uh, are the possibilities for Alice, what she can uh, get. Accessories, first of all. Backpack, glasses, glasses with backpack. So, there are some quite wide choices of uh, accessories. And the list of behavior for her are quite, it's uh, quite large. She can stand still, casual make a phone call and then she will get a phone of course she can sit she can listen she can sit relax let me make her sit relax add her to this chair as if she was waiting for somebody and in the meantime i continue to check out the content of the library that contains billboards silhouettes flying animals and these animals also uh, have an inbuilt behavior. So if I add these butterflies here to the scene, they start to fly around the head of Alice. In a moment, they are part of the scene. Birds will behave the same animals. So let's add the cat of Alice to the scene. And you see it's already moving, already behaving. And so we'll do the rest of the different animals uh, from this library. So the scene was uh, very quickly furnished. And uh, we just have an overview now of what we've done. And in the advanced list, the container of today was filled with all of these objects. So they are part of this container, which can be set visible or can be hidden. Here it is, uh, the empty hole or not empty hole. That's a possibility. So if I would like to save this possibility, this option, in fact, of the empty hole, I go into the phasing side of my uh, list and generate a new phase that I can rename and this will be the face with the empty hole. Contrary, if the container is uh, visible, that should be saved as a different face. And I have already some pre-saved faces because uh, this building uh, has all its element uh, in, uh, prepared in 3D and all these were imported, so the hierarchy or re hierarchical organization of the modeler was kept in twin motion. And setting visible and not visible folders combination saved in phasing tools, I can even simulate the different construction phases for it. 
So the foundation, then it's erected even more, the construction goes on, the structure appears, the different pipes are integrated, the slabs continue, and of course when the building is finished and the presentation phase for myself uh, is on, then I will uh, set visible most of the things and even the plants surrounding the building and uh, giving a good, nice aspect to it. So this is the phasing tool about. We are almost uh, finished, but uh, first of all we have to set some visual effects. That means editing the camera, for which the focal, editing the focal of course is a, a very important parameter. Then we can uh, correct the perspective, it, uh, the verticals are distorted for any reason. One click and they turn panel again, these verticals. The vignetting can be done, so right inside Twin Motion, I can edit the scene uh, with complementary elements. Depth of Thirds is something that should be activated, and in a moment it's active. I can work out the distance, I can work out the radius, the bucket threshold, shape, size, and all this. Color, once again something I activate, and when it's activate, it will recolor my scene in a certain manner. My library stores some presets, dragging and dropping into the viewport a combination means I recolor the whole scene and then I can continue to work out the different settings working out the brightness, the contrast, saturation for this color, I can achieve a different presentation, less realistic, but with a very nice effect. Filter is a different option. If I activate the filter, the first thing what it will do, it will filter out the color for all from all materials and to turn my whole scene into a white model. Only those materials will keep their color, which have a transparency assigned. Such as the water surface, the glass, and even the sky will uh, remain blue. Presets are also available here too, from the library, dragging and dropping into the viewport. I can continue for a, a hand drawing style, so setting the thickness of the lines and adding some colors or filtering out the colors so I can opt for a not realistic presentation this time. Okay, and I'm ready to save cameras. Saving camera in Twinmotion is extremely easy. Big plus sign, I click on it and the camera was saved. It wasn't saved a still camera, it was saved a sequence, which has a time length assigned. It means uh, I can generate a video very easily. So just uh, choosing a different camera position, clicking on the plus sign again, a new sequence was added to the previous one and because I'm in Twin Motion, I can review the video In between frames are automatically calculated by Twin Motion. The timeline changes because it has two ends now. The left hand side and will manage the hour of the day for the first scene. Let's choose something in a morning scene and the sunset scene for the last one. Good. And we can review. So I'm able to check out the way the light changes, the shadow moves in this square. And then I'm ready to edit these videos, pre-saved videos. Where is the video I've saved? Here it is. So this will be one element and then I choose another pre-saved video about the way cars enter the square 
and I can check out So here is a new clip without going into an external video editor to merge, to stitch these clips together. I can do it right in Twinmotion and now I'm ready to uh, send uh, the final rendering uh, command to Twinmotion. And what can I render? Images. I choose the um, camera I would like to render, then I choose a resolution, there is a preset of course, but I can customize this um, resolution, and the output will be PNG or JPEG format. Videos can be saved in the same way, so I choosing the clip, let's go for the clip, save together, resolution that can be customized, and the output will be uh, video media format, mp4 format, or frames can be saved independently. And there is a third presentation mode in uh, Twinmotion, which is called BIM motion. What does it mean? It means that uh, I can save an executive that allows to anybody not having Twinmotion on his computer to navigate, to emerge into the project exactly the way I did myself during my settings. Such a beam motion executive can be previewed, so let me generate a preview. And we get back to that full screen mode. I've started my presentation. Here it is. The timeline is available, so I can change the period of the day in such a beam motion presentation. And the way I navigate in a beam motion project is exactly the same as I navigate in twin motion. So either I use a keyboard combination with mouse button, only keyboard shortcuts or a gamepad can be added. And this, is, this can be added to Twinmotion as well. The next possibility is to save the whole Twinmotion presentation in stereoscopic mode. So it's specific glasses, it can be watched on 3D TV. That increases even more the emerging um, effect. And we can also add Oculus Rift. So this uh, last version of Twinmotion allows and supports uh, Oculus Rift and uh, make uh, these scenes even more uh, accessible and more interactive in this regard. So I'm navigating, I'm just discovering my project with the same ease as in Twinmotion. And there is a, sec a third, or I don't know how, <laughs> which, uh, how to call it, navigation mode where the camera turns into a pedestrian. So it will remain also always at an eye level. As, an, as I'm advancing with it, I cannot lift the camera, but it detects the geometry, it climbs the, the stairs, it uh, detects the wall, it can enter only through the door, for example, into buildings. So like an average pedestrian, I'm able to uh, visit the whole building and the whole site. When I deactivate this pedestrian mode, then I can lift the camera and generate fly throughs and uh, different other views. The cameras save the clips are accessible. I can check out each of them and even the phasing tools are accessible, so anybody who is uh, a client, a collaborator, can check out, for example, the facings for this building. So, for example, here is another possibility of collaboration with uh, site professionals. Me, as an architect, I can control the model, the 3D model, if the ventilation 
the mouths were well integrated into the slabs. So checking out the 3D model also um, an idea to use the beam motion and the twin motion phasing function. And of course, uh, when I want to make the final presentation, then I will have all um, elements visible of my scene, and that will be. Let's keep this scene as a final a scene for the twin motion presentation, and now I will uh, show you a nice uh, video. which was saved uh, based on this uh, model. It's a full HD video uh, with uh, several thousand, about 3000 uh, frames, which was uh, rendered in about uh, two hours time. This is uh, the end of my presentation. Thank you for watching, and I'm ready to join you at the GoToMeeting uh, site, GoToWebinar site, and answer your questions. Thank you, Ildiko. That's great. Okay, uh, we have a question. The first question is, is it possible to have the people as silhouettes? Yes, of course. Uh, billboard silhouettes uh, can be added to the scene. Okay. Um, can a user assign materials and UV mapping to models from their outside software? Is there a special protocol to do this? For instance, linked file structures? And you should be able to read the question. I just assigned it to you. Okay. I see it. Can a user assign materials? to models from their outside uh, software. Uh, maybe it's not very clear. In fact, whenever you import a model, lighting assigned to buildings. So uh, whenever uh, you import a model, materials are also imported. There are maps, JPEG maps over surfaces. And uh, you can uh, change these maps, you can change materials over surfaces, and uh, this is the way it works. A special protocol to do this, linked file structure. Uh, there, are, there is no linked file structure in Twinmotion. You open the full model inside Twinmotion, no outside link, uh, links uh, with Twinmotion, and uh, you change materials over there. You can create your own materials with uh, it, their own map structures that can be saved afterwards into the catalog. And this is how you can uh, customize even this part of the catalog, and that which can be applied afterwards with a drag and drop uh, over surfaces. OK, I see already the next question. How is lighting assigned to buildings? With Twinmotion, uh, you can uh, add uh, independent light sources uh, to buildings and generate independent light sources. And this is uh, the way uh, you create and you complete uh, your presentations. I hope I answered the question. Yeah, uh, perfectly, actually. Um, the feedback is, yeah, everybody's very happy. So uh, I see if you have any more questions, this is the time. Um, otherwise, I will um, wrap it up for you. OK, I don't see any more questions, Ildiko. So I want to thank everyone for um, participating in this webinar. Sorry for the slides going so fast. Thank you for attending. And uh, I want to remind everyone to visit our webpage at noveg.com to find this amazing tool that you just saw today. And, uh, you know, just check out Twinmotion and you'll be able to watch this webinar in its entirety on YouTube and Vimeo as early as tomorrow morning, hopefully, if we patch it together. So, um, 
check it out again and then, you know, um, come visit us at Novage. And in, for more information on specials and releases, uh, you can also join the Novage network, um, like Facebook or Plus or Twitter, where you can find the latest news, latest specials. And don't forget the next week's webinar is about um, the future of design with Fusion 360. And to rewatch today's webinar or previous ones, check out our Novage YouTube and Vimeo channels, as I said. And there's so many webinars in our playlist. This is number 203, so there's uh, webinars for every software taste. Thanks again of, uh, for joining us today. Have a wonderful day, and thank you so much, Eldico, for um, this unconventional uh, <laughs> presentation, but um, stunning, I may say. Um, great, let's do this, this again. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, and uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye. From my side. Bye-bye.